Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rachak Wadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And peace and blessings to all you Akim out there pushing this word with all truth and sincerity. And to all you believers out there who believe in on the gospel. And it's the brother Kwara Abad from the GMS Houston camp. And as you can see, I'm out here by the water. You know, I wanted to come by the water today. I'm my uh, elder Manatazak by shit today, you know, by the water. But, and Lord willing, y'all can hear me, you know, the waves, the water hitting upon the rocks and the winds, the wind blowing. But, you know, Lord willing, y'all can hear this lesson be edifying. But I want to touch on something, man. As you can see right now in the current state of the world, you see, it's, it's, it's plagues that's hitting the world, tribulation we see coming. Right? Troubling times. You see, but us in the know, that's not something for us. When we see these things coming to, to start to doubt, start to get worried or, or get scared. <laughs> you know what I mean? But in fact, we should rejoice. Why? Because the worse this world get, the more tribulation that come, the more plagues that come, that's the closer we get to our salvation, man. You see? And when you go into the scriptures as we gonna get, Lord willing, but the Most High used the plagues that he go bring upon the world. Um, he used the analogy of a woman in travail. You see, a, 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 a woman about to bring forth a child, man. You see, you know, once those contractions come and they get more painful and painful and they, they, they start to get closer and close together. Well, that's these plagues that's coming, man. They get worse and worse like the coronavirus. You see, that's, that's a, a slight contraction, you know? But after this, the Most High will start bringing more painful, right? More dreadful, more fearful things upon this world. And they go come start coming right behind another, as you can see. You see? It's prophecy moving so fast, news is updated every day. If not every day, every, every other hour, man. You see, or every few hours. Why? Because those contractions are getting closer. You see? And once they get closer, what's next? The delivery of that child. Well, guess what? As more plagues come, the more painful they get, you see, guess what's going to be delivered? The elected nation of Israel, man. You see that? So we should rejoice, man. As we see this world going down, let the world mourn. Let the people in the world without the truth mourn. But we should rejoice because we know that's the closer our Lord going to come, man. So I want to hop straight into the scriptures. And Lord willing, this lesson be edifying. This is 2nd Ezra 16. And I'm going to start at... 35, 2nd Ezra 16 and 35. It says, Hear now these things and understand them, ye servants of the Lord. Behold the word of the Lord, receive it. Believe not the gods of whom the Lord spake. Right, don't believe the gods of the world. Don't believe Jesus. Jesus telling you, you're going to prosper. Jesus telling you everything going to get better in the world. Well, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai said, a troublesome time coming upon the world. A time like never before. So don't believe those guys. Don't be uh, 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 beguiled, right? Don't be beguiled by the serpent and his doctrine, man. Take heed to what's being spoken by Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai through the mouth of his prophets, man. You see? It says, behold, the plagues draw nigh and are not slack. And are not slack. They ain't gonna let up a little bit. No, the plague's coming closer, man. The plague's coming closer. They ain't slack like the coronavirus. People say, well, it's gonna get better. We just gotta wait it out. You know, jobs gonna come back. You know, uh, uh, the eviction uh, situation. People gonna start getting their houses and go back to work to get money to pay their rent. No, they ain't. the plague's ain't gonna be slack. From here on out, they gonna get worse, man. You see? It says, behold, the plague's draw nigh and are not slack, as when a woman with child in the ninth month bringeth forth her son within two or three hours of her birth, great pains come past her womb. Which pains, when a child cometh forth, they slack not a moment, man. You see that? So as, as it get closer to delivery or deliverance, it's gonna be more painful. So the same thing with us. The more we get closer to deliverance, it's gonna be more painful, you see? It says, even so shall not the plagues be, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth and the world shall mourn. Right, the world gonna mourn. We ain't gonna mourn, man. We ain't, remember, Yahweh Shai said his kingdom is not of this world. You see? So if we're part of Yahweh Shai, we not of this world. The world gonna mourn. We not gonna mourn, man. Right? 
So it says, even so shall not the plagues be slack to come upon the earth, and the world shall mourn, and sorrow shall come upon it on every side. So what shall we do? It says, oh my people, hear my word, make you ready to the battle, so we should get ourselves ready, man. You see, it ain't the time like Elder Yashawama recently been saying, it ain't the time to party and it's an Israelite party. No, this is the time to get serious. This grace period is for us to get closer to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. You see, it said that the, the bride was going to make herself ready, man. We making ourselves ready, man. Repenting, fasting, praying, reading, you see, studying, going out on the highways and hedges, so on and so forth. Getting our minds right, man. You know? It says, oh, my people, hear my word, make you ready to the battle, and then those evils be even as pilgrims upon the earth. But I just wanted to get that to show that these plagues are likened unto a woman about to bring forth a son, right? Now, going back into the point how our deliverance is likened unto the same thing. Before we can get delivered, we have to go through a time like never before. Before we get delivered, like Yahweh Shai said, the servant ain't greater than the master. Before Yahweh Shai sat down on the right hand side of the father, he had to be crucified. You see, he had to be put to shame, man. Eh? You see? He had to go through a hard time in the Garden of Gethsemane. The Lord was uh, uh, sweating blood, man. So we ain't just go dance our way into the kingdom, right? We go be in the midst of these plagues, but as we're in the midst of them, right? That's the closer we get to getting out of them, man. You know, because as, as we just got, the things that's coming upon this world was likened unto a woman in travail. The same thing with our salvation. And, and it's crazy because going back to the, um, the point, we in the world, like it says, Esau is the end of the world, right? So we in currently in Esau world. It says Jacob is the beginning of it that follow. Well, it's cold because who the most high, let me get this real quick. Who the most high going to use to bring forth some of these plagues, man? Bring forth um, a time like never before, right? He going to use Esau. You see? Use Esau. Let me grab this real quick. This is Psalms. This is Psalm 17. Psalm 17 and 13, it says, Arise, O Yahweh, disappoint him, cast him down, deliver, deliver, right? Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. So the Most High going to use Esau to bring some of these plagues. Although the Most High going to do his thing too, but he will use Esau to bring forth some of these plagues, man. But you know what's cold? Esau and Jacob came out the same womb. They was delivered together. Hey, so that takes me to this. They was delivered together. Like I said, it was twins in thy womb. So out of this woman that's about to bring forth, you have plagues that's going to come out of this, which is Esau, and you're going to have deliverance unto salvation, which is Jacob, man. You see? But let's get this. This is, um, if that makes sense, you know. This is Isaiah 26, and I'm going to start at 16. Isaiah 26 and 16. It says, Yahweh, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Right. When we going through things, who we call upon? Yahweh by Hashim Yahweh Shai, man. So when we in trouble, who we going to call upon? Yahweh by Hashim Yahweh Shai, man. Like it said in uh, Psalms 91, and I will set him on high and deliver him because he have known my name. You see that? So when we in trouble, when we go go through Jacob's trouble, we're going to call on the Lord. But watch what it's like and unto. It says, Lord, in trouble have they visited thee. They poured out a prayer when thy chastening was upon them. Like as a woman with child that draw up near the time of her delivery, going back to just like the plagues, right? So our salvation the same way. Through these plagues, our salvation going to come, man. It says, like as a woman with child that draw up near the time of her delivery, is in pain and crieth out in her pains so have we been in thy sight O lord that's the same thing as we get closer to salvation we're gonna have to call on the lord even more so why because we're gonna be in situations that is gonna be no way out a gun ain't gonna get you out the situation yourself ain't gonna get you out the situation 911 ain't gonna get you out the situation nobody only yahweh by hashim yahweh so the more things that come into the world the more we're gonna have to call upon the lord for man Right, like a woman when she's screaming, when uh, you know, uh, uh, about to push that baby out. You feel me? That's the same thing. It hurt. You feel me? So as we going through more situations, we got to call on the Lord. 
It says, like as a woman with child that draw up near the time of her delivery is in pain and crieth out in her pains, so have we been in thy sight, O Yahweh. We have been with child, we have been in pain, we have, as it were, brought forth wind, right? Because the nation of Israel, man, since King Solomon, we've been in captivity after captivity. You see, 1492, Christopher Columbus, uh, Atlantic slave trade, you know, in the ghettos, in the hoods, you see? Last high, first five, struggling, no money, broke, so on and so forth. So we've been going through this, this pain, but it never brought deliverance. Nothing never came forth from that, right? It says, we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth. Neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen, right? Esau ain't fall yet. Moab ain't fall yet. And we ain't get delivered yet, man. You see? So going back to those pains, it's the same thing. Just as the plagues go come upon the world as a woman about to bring forth the sun, well, out of those pains, right? The tribulation, you see? The tough time that's about to come on the world that's gonna bring Israel deliverance. Oh, matter of fact, matter of fact, they remind me of Revelation 12. It's Revelation 12, kind of how Yahweh shot when he was being brought forth, you know. Uh, with, with heroin in there, man, right? You see, but let me get this this is Revelation 12 and 1. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven a woman clothed with the sun and the moon under her feet, and this woman is symbolic for Israel. Right? It says, and upon her head a crown of 12 stars, the 12 tribes of Israel, and she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. Man, you see pain to be delivered. So before we can get delivered, we have to go through certain things on the earth. Now that, that takes me to Luke, Luke 21. And Lord willing, you know, making sense, feel like I'm all over the place, but it takes me to this, Luke 21. And um, I'm going to start at 7. This is the disciples um, speaking to Yahweh Shai. They was asking Yahweh Shai, what's going to be the sign of your coming and the end of the world? How are we going to know when we're close to being delivered, Lord? Right? <clears throat> Luke 21 and 7. And they asked him, saying, Master, but when shall these things be? And what sign will there be when these things shall come to pass? And he said, Take heed that you be not deceived, for many shall come in my name, saying, I am Mashiach, or the anointed. And the time draw up near, go ye not therefore after them. It says, But when you shall hear of wars and commotions, be not terrified. Like I mentioned earlier, we shouldn't be terrified when we hear about these things, man. Like the scripture saying, 1 Peter 4, I believe, thinking not strange concerning the, the fiery trial which shall try us, man. You see, because from now on to the, to the end of Jacob's trouble, when Yahweh shot come, we going to be tried. But we shouldn't think none of these things strange. Why? Because we was warned ahead of time. We, matter of fact, we read the warning right now. We read the, the pains and the plagues that's about to, happen, <clears throat> about to happen upon the earth right now. But out of that will come our salvation. We're going to get to it. It says, but when you shall hear wars and commotions, and we handed that, man. World War III is fastly appro approaching. And commotions, uh, uh, riots, uh, protests, you see, uproars of the people. It says, be not terrified, for these things must first come to pass, but the end is not by and by, right? It's still some things that's gonna have to happen. It says, then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. And we seeing that, man. Earthquakes all over the world, right? Hurricanes, you know, fires. You see, like I said, the Lord will visit this earth in tempest, fire, so on and so forth. It says, um, then said he unto them, nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom and great earthquakes shall be in diverse places. And famines, and we, we seeing famines happening in different parts of the world. And we starting to see the beginning of famines coming to America, right? Because why? When the coronavirus hit, and you can say what, hey, and the wind started to blow a little loud, so Lord willing, y'all can still hear me. You know, Satan, you know, the prince of the power there, you know what I mean? But um, 
people could say the coronavirus is real or fake. Well, it could be fake, it could be real, but the effects of it are real, man. People really lost jobs from that. Businesses were shut down, so since businesses were shut down, farmers, they, they couldn't sell their products to no companies, man. Restaurants was closed, bars was closed. So those farmers had to euthanize their animals, right? Do away with their uh, produce, right? Vegetables, fruit, you see? So that hurt the economy, although you can't physically tell, but it's gonna start slowly proving itself, man. You see? Because now when the so-called economy do try to open back up, it's gonna be a lack of food. Then people gonna start going into the stores. It's only three days worth of food on a regular day-to-day -day basis. Think about when the emergency hit. People gonna go in there, the, the, the stores gonna be cleaned out, man, in a, in a day's time, man. You see? So a famine gonna come to America too. You know? Not even to mention the Most High, he gonna bring floods, hurricanes to destroy crops, man. To destroy cattle. You see? So famines. That's one of those plagues that's gonna come. It says famines and pestilence. The coronavirus, that's a small pestilence, man. You see, it's gonna be more deadly pestilence. As soon as you catch it, you are gonna die. That's the things that's coming, man. You see, diseases, people bodies rotting away from dying, just laying there dead, you know? Yeah, man, these things are coming. And the world can't see it, but we can see it. Why? Because we read it. It says, and pestilence and fearful sights and great signs shall there be from heaven. Chariot sightings. Uh, you had out there in uh, uh, China. It looked like a, a, a chariot shot down a laser when they talk about the, uh, electricity or something struck out there like the brother's been doing videos on, right? You had uh, Lebanon, you see, got hit, bomb, you know? But it's gonna be more sites, man. Things we, that's not even in the scriptures. <laughs> you feel me? Things that's not even revealed yet that's gonna happen, man. Right? Like I said, Yahweh Shah said a time like never before. We can't specifically tell you what exactly it's gonna be. We prophesy in part and we know in part, man. Right? But we gonna get to, you know, how we're gonna be delivered from all these things. I'm just going through a few plagues, you know? And it says, I'm gonna jump down a little bit. It says, verse 12, before all these, they shall lay their hands on you and we come into that time too, right? Where the persecution go come to the church. That's another thing that we're gonna have to go through before we get delivered. It says, and persecute you and deliver you up to synagogues and into prisons, thrown into prison, thrown into concentration camps. And that's another thing, martial law, concentration camps, you see, uh, 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 uproars of the people, uh, the, the citizens going against the government, so on and so forth, man, right? It says, and you shall be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake, and it shall turn to you for a testimony. Settle with therefore in your hearts not to meditate before what you sh shall, shall answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which your adversary shall not be able to gain, see, or resist. It says, I'm going to jump down. Verse 22. For these be the days of vengeance. These be the days of vengeance that we in. These be the days that the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, gonna show his power, man. You see, because the people in this world don't fear Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. They don't know that the, the Most High used to be called Allah Shadia, a terrible demon like power. But he's gonna show his power again. You see? It says, For these be the days of vengeance, that all things which are written may be fulfilled. It says, Verse 26, I'm gonna slack it. Verse 25, it says, and there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars upon the earth, distress of nations, people panicking because they see no way out and they don't have the hope that we have, right? It says, and perplexity, the seas and the waves run, right? It says, and then men's hearts felling them for fear. But going back, our hearts shouldn't fell us. Yes, we're going to be in we in the flesh, certain things might shake us up, but ultimately, we know what's the end of these things, man. We know at the end of these, the pregnancy of pains, the pregnancy of plagues, our deliverance gonna come. You see? And that's one thing why I say, you know, in the time, it says, um, my servants shall eat, my servants shall laugh and rejoice in those days. Why would you laugh and rejoice? One, because you're being protected and taken care of by the Lord, but you know, that's, that's one day closer you get to 
about to see the Lord. Him and the angels come and sa save us up out of here, man. One day closer to our kingdom. One day closer to us not having to go to work no more. Us not having to wear a fucking mask, man. Us not having to be under Esau Edom. You see? Uh, all, man, come on, man. In captivity. In these chains of darkness no more. Right? But to be in everlasting life. New bodies. To finally be with your and see your Hawashai again, man. To rule forever. So we should want these things to come because we're closer to what we want, which is our kingdom, man. Like it says, we look um, real quick in Hebrews. So like it just came through the spirit. Hebrews 13 and 14 for here, right here in captivity, for here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. And that's what we're looking for, man. We seek one to come. You see? So we looking past the things that's coming. Like I said about Jehoshaphat in Hebrews 12. It said, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross and despised the shame. He got through what he had to get through, which is was his pains, right? Which is his troubling time, troubling situation. He got through that because he looked on what he was going to receive for getting through that. The same thing for us. We should look past these things we have to go through. Yes, brace ourselves for them. Right? But look past to what we're going to receive. That's going to make it that much more easy to get through them, man. Right? But back in Luke 21, finishing off these plagues, and it's just some plagues. It got second edges, 16, 15 plagues all over the Bible. But you know, I'm cutting it short for time's sake. It says, men's hearts, it's so like in Luke 21 and 26, men's hearts fell in them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken verse 28 and when these things begin to come to pass when these plagues begin to come going into the point of the lesson right the pregnancy of plagues will deliver us unto salvation so when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draw of nigh man you see that so when more plagues come Start to look up. You're going to see more cherries. Look up. Our salvation go draw an eye, man. Right? It says, verse 29, And he spake to them a parable, Behold the fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of yourselves that summer is nigh at hand. Right? When you see trees start to grow and flowers start to start to uh, 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 flourish and come forth, you know, okay, we get into the time of spring and summer. Right? You know you're, you're in those times. So Yahweh Shai is saying, so likewise ye, when you see these things come to pass, so likewise when we see these plagues, likewise when we, when we see these troubles, right? Diseases, pestilence, Esau locking down cities, uh, the market of beasts. You see, when we see these things, guess what? So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye, that the kingdom of the most high is nigh at hand, man. Going back to the title, the closer and more the plagues come, the closer we are to our salvation and kingdom. You see that? And I'll start to wind it down because I hear some, some Edomites coming. <laughs> you feel me? Because the point pretty much made. But I'm going to get this. This is 2nd Edges. 2nd Edges 7 and, um, and 6. It says, there is also another thing. A city is built, a city, the kingdom of heaven. Then you I say, I go to prepare a place for you, right? It says a city is built and set up on a broad field full of all good things. And that's what we waiting for, man. All good things. You see, no worry, no crying, no death, no sicknesses. You see? It says, full of all good things. The entrance thereof is narrow and it's set in a dangerous place to fall. Like it's... it's like as if there were a fire on the right hand and on the left a deep water. Only one path between them both, even between the fire and the water, so small that there could but one man go there at once. Telling you how hard it's going to get to get through the kingdom. Like it says, the narrow path, man. Broadway, that's for the world. Everybody go through the Broadway, but only the elect going to go through that narrow path. But this is the point. Verse 9. If this city, right, if this kingdom, if these promises, if this inheritance from Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, right? If this city now were given unto a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, 
how shall he receive the inheritance, man? So we don't go through these plagues. Think about it. If a woman don't go through the contractions, right? <sighs> you feel me? How the women be screaming, holding the, the husband's hand, squeezing it, sweating. If she don't go through the contractions, you never gonna have a, the baby never go come forth. If you never go through the pains, the baby never gonna come forth. So as as Israelites, if we don't go through these plagues, Jacob's trouble, that narrow path, then we can't get delivered. You see, we can't get delivered, man. You know, it says, if this city now were given to a man for an inheritance, if he never shall pass the danger set before it, how shall he receive this inheritance, man? But we gonna go through the danger, but the comfort in that is going through that danger, the Lord gonna save us out of that danger, and that's when that baby gonna be brought forth. When your high side cracked those clouds with the angels, that's when that baby brought forth, man. That's when the deliverance come. You see, that child is brought forth. The sons of Israel and, the, you know, daughters of Israel, the children of Israel are going to be brought forth and delivered, man. After the pains, after the contractions of the plagues, man. Let's get that. And I'm going to end it. This is 2nd Edges 16. And I'm going to, matter of fact, I'm going to start up a little bit because the point I want is in verse 74. But I'm going to start at 67 because this is going into the plagues that we're about to come into. Well, some more of them going into Esau and his army coming down with great wrath because he know that he have for a short time. And this is going to explain martial law and the checkpoints, right? Concentration camps. It says, second edge of 16 and 67, it says, Behold, the Most High himself is the judge. Fear him. We shouldn't fear the world. Yahweh Shai said, don't fear the ones who can kill the body. And after they kill the body, they can't do nothing else. But he said, I tell you who to fear. Fear the one who can kill the body and the soul, man. Who can put the soul in hell, man. Fear the most high, man. Because if we fear him, he going to protect us from this world. It says, leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle with them no more. And so shall the most high lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. Deliver us from all trouble. Deliver us from these plagues and pains. You see? It says, verse 68, for behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. Talking about Esau. This going back to him killing Cain, uh, Cain killing Abel. This going back to when Jacob got the birthright, Esau said, when the, the days of my father are at hand and I will slay my brother Jacob. Well, guess what? That's, that balled over into the day. It's a burning wrath. He been wanting to get this off his chest. He been wanting to persecute and come after the Israelites, man. His brother, because he jealous because we got the birthright. It says, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you, talking about these armies, military, foreign troops, mercenaries, peacekeepers, the blue hats, right? It says, it's kindled over you and they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. Take away you well, take you to them concentration camps. It says, and they that consent unto them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. For there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection, a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. Who fear the Lord? The Israelites. You see? We the ones who got a fear of the Lord. The, the Edomites don't fear the Lord. Yahweh Bashim Yahweh The uh, Moab, they don't fear the Lord. We fear the Lord, but more so the elect out of the Israelites, man. So they go come after us trying to put us to death. Those great pains those fearful and intense times it says they shall be like madmen sparing none but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the lord for they shall waste and take away their goods and cast them out of their houses and throw your ass into a concentration camp van but this is the point one of the points then shall they be known who are my chosen and they shall be tried as gold in a fire the elect have to be tried Try woman when again going back to what the scriptures say the play is coming as a woman giving birth our deliverance go be as a woman giving birth that woman she she being tried her spirit is being tried she giving all she got when she bringing forth that son the same thing for us it says they shall be tried as gold in the fire this is the point here O ye my beloved the house of David the elect here O ye my beloved self the Lord behold the days of trouble are at hand but I will deliver you from the same. You see, the days of trouble are at hand, but the Lord is going to deliver us from the same, man. You see, the days of plagues are upon us. The days of Jacob's trouble is upon us, but the Lord is going to deliver us from these pains, man. 
Like as a baby coming out, the Lord gonna deliver us into salvation. So the more pl plagues and pestilence, tribulation come upon the world, the closer we get to our salvation. You see that? But man, that's pretty much all I got. I went longer than I, you know, really wanted to, but it's all through the spirit. You know, but Lord willing, y'all heard me. You know, the, the, the wind wasn't too loud, the water wasn't too loud. But more so, the lesson was that to find to the elect out there, man. And comforting too, man. Because we're going to de get delivered from everything. All the pains, man. Matter of fact, matter of fact, one more. This Jeremiah 30. Jeremiah 30 and 7. It says, Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but it's the point. But he shall be saved out of it, man. We're going to be saved out of those pains and tribulation that Jacob's trouble going to bring forth, man. But Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to you. Hawa ba'ashim, yawashah, ba'ashim, rechak, wadash. And with that, shalom.